The state of Idaho has had its fair share of experience in a courtroom as the name defendant in lawsuits over the years. It's one of the reasons the legislature created the Legislative Legal Defense Fund in 2012 to help pay for any legal expenses incurred by the legislature. It's a lot of legs, I know, getting legs in this story, but I digress. This is a fund, by the way. They are trying to refill quickly this session with $4 million as a couple of lawsuits that have to do with how Republican leaders have handled COVID safety during the session are working their way through the courts. And that's just one judicial fund set up by lawmakers. The other is the Constitutional Defense Fund. This one was created in 1995 and was originally set up to pay for Idaho's legal battles with the federal government. But it has also, and especially lately, been used to pay out losses and lawsuits brought against the state for passing what were deemed by judges to be illegal laws. That fund has financed more than $3 million in settlements and legal fees, and most of that coming in just the last five years. The latest example of that was this past summer, after Idaho passed an anti-transgender birth certificate law, the one that tried to stop people from changing the gender marker on their birth certificates to match their gender identity. In August, a federal judge confirmed that law, just two months old, was unconstitutional and violated a previous court's ruling. The state is also waiting on a ruling on its transgender athlete ban. The Fairness and Women's Sports Act also passed last session and immediately went to court. Not that they didn't see those lawsuits coming. In the middle of the 2020 session, Idaho's Attorney General opined that both of those bills would be unconstitutional and likely wouldn't stand up in court. The legislature, then the governor, went ahead with them anyway, and the state ended up paying out more money. Which brings us to what is happening this session. There's a monuments bill making its way through the state house, and it would require any city or local government government to get the legislature's permission to remove monuments or rename something named after a historical figure. It passed the house just yesterday, 5119, and is on its way to a Senate committee. Maybe. I say maybe because late yesterday, the state attorney general offered his opinion on House Bill 90. And just like he did with the transgender bills, he warned if passed, it would be unconstitutional, but also unenforceable. In an opinion requested by Representative Ilana Rubel, Assistant Chief Deputy Brian Kane said Article 3, Section 19 of Idaho's Constitution prohibits the legislature from passing, quote, local or special laws concerning, quote, changing the names of persons or places and regulating county and township business. It would be unenforceable, according to Kane, because it overstates the legal authority of concurrent resolutions, meaning they could suggest it, but not necessarily enforce it. Kane also called the wording vague. The terms proper measures and proper means are undefined and likely left open to be challenged on grounds of the First Amendment. We reached out to ask Representative Doug, uh, the representative who put this bill forward, it's uh, Akunowitz, the bill's sponsor, he asked, or we asked him about this development with the Attorney General. He told us he is working with Deputy Chief Kane to improve what he called a popular and important effort to protect history in Idaho. History isn't necessarily protected by buildings and or monuments. It's highlighted by them, for sure. Kind of like the Civil War is highlighted in Idaho by the Robert E. Lee Creek outside of Idaho City. There is a petition out there for the Idaho Geographic Names Board to change it, and if they can, that doesn't necessarily change the fact that General Lee led an insurgence against this country. But that area is on federal land in the Boise National Forest, so this bill likely wouldn't apply to that anyway. And we couldn't really think of any other monuments or buildings named after a controversial historical figure that would be covered by this bill. We did, however, think about other Idaho place names that we may want to consider changing, more than consider probably. And to be clear, you're about to hear some words that you likely find offensive, and you should. To find these places, we ran through a quick review of the U.S. Geological Survey of Geographic Names Information System. It's a lot of words. Or, like we like to call it, genus. Genus has a relatively long list when it comes to Idaho. Alphabetically, there's Chinaman's Hat, a 6,200-foot mountain in Washington County. Benawa County has Dago Creek, which runs into the St. Mary's River, but not to be confused with Dago Peak Gulch, a tributary of the South Fork of the Coeur d'Alene River in Shoshone County. Very near, you guessed it, 5,000-foot-high Dago Peak. Benawa County also has Negro Brown Hill, a 2,500-foot peak, which is quite a bit smaller than Negro Peak, a summit in the Salmon Chalice National Forest of more than 10,000 feet. It's also very close to Negro Green Creek. 
Not to be confused with Clearwater County's Negro Creek, also known as, well, that other word. But a creek doesn't quite carry the same water as Negro Head Rapids along the Snake River in Nez Perce County. Adams County is home to a gulch named after either Negro Bill or Negro Jim, depending on who you ask. And oops, I almost forgot Shite Creek in Clearwater County, which would have left me up it without a paddle. That leaves the extra long lineup of Gem State place names consisting of the ethnic slur Squaw, like Squaw Butte in Gem County. There are more than 60 Squaw specified sites in Idaho, which seems excessively slurry. Sorry, forgot to open with no offense. Yeah, I know, I was shocked too. I had no idea there were so many. And it's worth noting, all those Negro named places may have been known by an even worse moniker. But in 1963, a federal law made all place names with that offensive derogatory name be changed to the word Negro on federal maps. And they don't show up on Google Maps either, but they certainly show up as locators on local sites.